Okay, so thank you everyone and thank you for joining the Wellness Wednesday workshop. I've got my desk here, so it feels very school of life. Um, got my incense burning, got a cup of tea and got my paper and pens. So someone's asking, well, I reckon paper, pens and then we'll see what else. So we're going to have Susie Pearl coming on and she is the most amazing lady. Um, she has been my business mentor for the last 10 years. She comes at it from a totally different place. One that suits me, that one that suited me, and um, and also one that I think we could all do with learning for as we go back out into the big wide world after this lockdown period. Um, she is mind, body, and spirit all the way, and she has got the most crazy story, which I'll let you sh her share with you in a second. But she'll also be taking us through mind mapping, visualization, um, and designing our life. So let's call her in. There she is. Hi, Jan. Hi Susie. How are you? I'm very good. I'm good. very, very good. So everybody, this is my Susie Pearl. Um, she's like a big sister to me and we've been through, probably I've probably told Susie more personal stuff than I have to mum. Sorry mum. <laughs> um, but Susie's been an incredible listening board. She's given me advice um, over the last 10 years that has absolutely had me nonplussed for a second thinking, I hadn't even looked at it from that angle. How could you possibly suggest it? Um, and then suddenly thinking, wow, and it opens up completely new doors of thinking, new visions, everything. Um, and Susie's very hands-on and practical. She likes to design her life. She likes to make it visionary. And um, there's been no other better practice for that really um, than in recent years when Susie, out of the blue, um, was told she had six weeks to live which was, I think, shocking for her community. She has so many friends. I mean, everybody, I, I know people just by people who say, do you know Susie Pearl? Um, and her, Susie was in Ibiza at the time and got a diagnosis that she had a brain tumor and was given six weeks to live in um, by Spanish, um, uh, what's the word, um, uh, by the Spanish doctors. And then she came to the UK and they agreed six weeks to live, which is a pretty damning sentence. Um, and Susie smiled all the way through it. Her <laughs> friends clubbed together and surrounded her. And also Susie just kind of drew, visioned, meditated. I mean, I'll let you take over now, Susie, but you were such an example of grace um, in the face of fear. And I think it's something we can all, um, we could all do a bit, uh, we could all do with a bit of um, during this time. Over to well, you, Susie. Thanks for that intro, Jazz. It's really nice to chat with you. I've missed our cups of tea and hanging out. With I you. know. So Not now it's like cup. virtual cups. Yeah, virtual cup of tea with my friend <laughs> Daz, which is so nice. Um, yeah, I've had a crazy journey. And um, I was told like a year and a bit ago that I had six weeks to live. But the good thing was I just didn't believe it. And I'd done so much work around the power of the mind. And my belief system said you're not going anywhere, girl. You know, this is not your time. My intuition came in really strong. It's like, you are not going to um, go anywhere. You know, you're going to get through this. And then you're going to talk to people and inspire them of how you can heal your body um, and, and use these mental mind power techniques that you've been learning about for the last 15 years. You're going to put them into practice, girl. <laughs> and um, so I didn't fear. I wasn't fearful. I had trust that it was all going to work out. And it did. I mean, the doctors, when they delivered the scan, the first scan um, was awful. They showed this humongous thing in my head. And they said, this isn't looking good. And I was in my usual kind of, you know, <laughs> It's all going to be fine. And so, of course, my family, were their eyes were rolling up and they were like, oh, God, you know, she's not accepting this. And I didn't accept yeah. it. And I thought, I'm going to put in all the protocols that I know about and I've been learning about, um, including great nutrition, including hypnosis, including positive visualization, creative visualization, hypnosis, Reiki, CBD oil, um, and, and and most of all, blasting myself with vitamins and high frequency mm -hmm. food. You came over to my house with Nick. You were, you know, advising me on food and everything. I did everything. I, mean, I contacted and lent in to everyone I could think of to give me information on. One lady's asking, is it? It was it um, malignant, Susie? 
Um, I don't really know what that means, actually, to be honest. Whether it was cancerous or not. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it it was. was cancer. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it yeah. was. And um, um, it was going to take over my whole brain. And, and they said, gave six weeks. They said, absolutely no way would you go. So they said, you have to go off and make a will, speak to your family, prepare. And I said to them, I'm not preparing anything. I'm going to walk out of here. And they were just like, oh, bless her. You know, she doesn't get it. And I didn't get it. And I refused to get it. And, you know, I'm very interested in the fact that we can. And I've read a lot since uh, from all the greats like Greg Braden, Joe Dispenza, you know, about um, Bruce Lipton, about the biology of belief. When you mm -hmm. have certain belief systems, you're informing your biology all the time about wellness. You know, we're talking about wellness here and wellness is led by a point of view. It's led by um, a paradigm and a perspective mm -hmm. about being well. And mm -hmm. we can talk ourselves into being well. You know, we have to yeah. do all the stuff. We have to eat well, think well, speak well. And I learned about learning and in, leaning into my community. You know, my mm -hmm. community where I live, I'm very lucky great bunch of people and they're all quite quirky and they don't you know I, none of us really took much notice of the doctors especially me yeah. and when yeah. the doctor well, I was saying this story but when the doctor delivered the third scan the first scan was awful the second sh scan is shrunk and the third scan I went in and the doctor was sort of scratching his head and he went I went in with my brother who cried he's a kind of real beefy pharma type guy he cried mm. because the, the doctor said you know, this is, I, I don't know quite how to say this. And we were like, oh, okay, tell us anyway. And he said, well, it's just like disappeared. It's gone. There's a slight bit of scar tissue, yeah. but full remission. And I didn't even know what full remission was. I had to Google it. And mm -hmm. apparently that means you're completely better. So, so, all of, um, so Susie basically family. came and lived with her family in the UK and yeah. you hit an aggressive um, chemo treatment, didn't you? Because yeah. there was no way you, they could operate at all. And yeah. they didn't have, my earring just fell out, they didn't have the highest hopes, but you went at it and in every spare moment of your day, you were working with people, working. with your staff. Yeah, I was um, working with myself. I was and, meditating a lot as well, yes. Jan. You know, and in I my hotel room, in my, I keep calling it my hotel room. In my, in my hospital <laughs> she calls room. her, her, her hospital, hospital room a hotel room. This is how optimistic Susie is. <laughs> I know. They come in to take my temperature uh, or they'd have to do observations, obs they call it, like every couple of hours and they come in and I go, shh. And they're like, why? And I said, because I'm being hypnotized. You know, I'd have my <laughs> neighbors who thought, you know, there's this crackpot in Ward yeah. 3 that thinks yeah. she's going to get out of this thing a lot. They think she's in a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a really big question that's come up here, Susie, that I think we should talk about. Someone said, yeah. I, I, I believe in all of this, but I can't afford it. And I think for a lot of people, the idea of an alternative way of treating themselves, um, yeah. one, they might think it alienates Western medicine. But I think yeah. if you can find a good balance of the both, that's the ultimate combination. And I think almost that's um, one of the most amazing things about what we have access to today. We have access to... Um, a very um, um, uh, specific and um, uh, point of view with kind of um, the medical system. And then we have this kind of wider mind, body, spirit kind of um, way of looking at life. And yeah. I think people often think that, you know, a lot of herbs and supplements, and they are, they're very, very expensive. And mm -hmm. then to be treated by um, various other alternative practitioners is also very costly. Um, mm -hmm. What do you say to that, Susie? What's the, you know, because yeah, obviously you stopped great. working straight away. You had to, yeah. you had a, a house you were paying that. money on. You you had yeah. a, um, an 18-year-old, was he then, in doing his A-levels? Yeah, A yeah. Um, I was a single mum. I didn't have a big pot of gold at the end of my rainbow. So I really had to manage, like we all do. I was juggling from my hospital. I try to stop calling it a hotel bedroom. My <laughs> hospital bedroom, I was juggling. And um, the good thing was I had, I'd worked in the field of positive psychology and written books about it and worked with a lot of really interesting people. And so I was able to say, hey guys, you know, I'm in trouble here, I need your help. And the treatments that I was given, people were kindly giving to me because mm. I was, you know, I needed it. Mm. So I, was, I found out, Jazz, how to ask for help. I'm mm -hmm. very proud. Mm. I don't like asking for help. But I was up against a wall at the time and I thought, I need this. And so mm -hmm. I called up everyone I knew 
and ask them to ask the people they know to see mm -hmm. if they would give me help. Mm -hmm. So the hypnotist was someone I knew on the island. She gave me hypnosis sessions every day during my illness. Didn't charge me, mm -hmm. it's never charged me. Um, my other friends would also help. So it's about really reaching into your community when you mm -hmm. need help. And I think this now is a good example with people being you know, in lockdown. There's a lot of people on their own. We know there's a lot of people suffering really a lot right now. Mm -hmm. Ask for help, make mm -hmm. your community aware that you mm -hmm. are on your own. I met a lady today who lives in my block and I never, I've lived here a year and I have never seen her before and we started chatting. And she said, oh yeah, I live just downstairs from you. And I said, oh, and I said, you know, are you with your family? She said, no, no, I'm on my own and it's quite a tough time. So I said to her, you know, if you need anything or any, you know, if I can make you food or anything, just let me know. And I really mean that. And she said, mm -hmm. oh, that's so nice. I know you mean it. I can see you mean that. So I think it's time now for us to understand what community is to lean in and help each other, even if we're not asked, you can identify who in your community needs a bit of a hand. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a lot of people needing a, a bit of a hand. It could be in your family and, or just through people you know. And if you can't, for example, you don't happen to know a hypnotherapist, you don't know um, somebody who does supplements or Reiki, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I think that's what we're gonna focus on now, isn't it? Is yeah. actually calling this stuff into your life. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, we, need, we, we say, we used to say we're seven people removed, didn't we? Exactly. But, um, but now by Instagram and, and the world is like, we can access the other side of the world in, by yep. picking up the phone. Yep. You know, I feel like we're two people at the very uh, most removed from Absolutely. somebody that we need. And so, you know, if you believe in the power of attraction and the power of um, um, thought creating your world and, and yep. emotion and, and your belief system, then you can pull in the people all pull in the money that will help you find the people that you need. So, yeah. um, so Susie's going to walk us through. Yeah. There was also just an interesting question. Oh, yeah. I just happened to see, I've only seen one question and it was, how did the doctors respond to your approach? Your, you know, yes. like the unusual approach, unconventional approach. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't, they said, don't talk to us about hypnosis. The CBD oil we had to hide. My brother mm -hmm. said, we're going to get into trouble for this. They didn't understand and nor did I what the legal position mm -hmm. was at that point mm -hmm. on CBD. And Even though there's a, quite a lot of research into CBD, especially with brain tumors. It's so, fantastic um, for what I had. And I mm -hmm. knew that intuitively. And I got um, my friends in, in Ibiza club together and bought me what I needed in, in, that, in that area mm -hmm. and, and had, it, had it sent to me. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, the doctor said, don't even talk to us about it. Because I sort of said, I think you should know this is what I'm taking. So yeah. My brothers asked, check that it doesn't it's compatible with what they're doing they don't have any they don't have any training on this no they no. don't know about nutrition mm -hmm. you know when you look at what doctors are trained they're not trained in nutrition and the food i was being served up would have killed me <laughs> there's nothing else you know if i wasn't got by this I would have been there wasn't the best food. hotel and on the on the food level so you know <laughs> Um, bringing me in green juices and salads and all of this sort of thing to, to, so that I could consume some healthy mm -hmm. stuff to raise my frequency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and someone know, else actually asked, is it high frequency food? And, um, and yes, you, Susie was looking for um, and, and seeking out high frequency food. But that's not to say, I think, if you don't have access to the freshest, most organic, most biodynamic, it's literally the looking for the best um, that you can get, you know, yeah. uh, the better than alternative. And I think that does two things. It's, um, it reinforces that you are taking your health into your hands. You, you've got this incredible medical device, uh, advice. You've got this alternative um, information via books, via the web, via people you know. But then you also have to do some of the, sh the shifting yourself. You have to yeah. be in charge and, and be putting that all together. Um, yeah. Someone said, what's high frequency food? So usually when people are talking about high vibrational food, they might be talking about... Um, nutritionally dense foods so um a lot of nutrients and a lot of variety of nutrients per calorie so to speak but also how fresh it is how alive it is how much prana or chi is in that food so for example canned cooked carrots as opposed to freshly cooked carrots um that's when we're looking for kind of food as close to nature and and as full of vitality as possible that's what we mean by high frequency food um uh yeah and, yes, you know, Kanika said, Kanika, this woman said here, my mother died of brain cancer last year. We did all the things you mentioned 
and remained optimistic, but didn't have remission as a goal. I thought, I thought the universe knows better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when, I mean, I'm not, um, I'm not qualified to talk on, on these kind of things, but you know, my, my father also had cancer five years ago and, um, and I found it really difficult because nobody on the medical side would, um, were interested in kind of my father's health at home um, mm -hmm. and this was his, his third cancer over the last seven years nobody had ever suggested to him changing his lifestyle mm -hmm. his routine or his diet mm -hmm. in any way shape or form and in fact um, I remember being in the hospital and the dietitian looking at my dad's you know um, um, food diary that we were keeping and she said um, that's great but you need some more trifle yeah. she said you yeah. need more sugar and more which you know is 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 the diet recommended when you have chemo because you're so depleted they want you to yeah. have sugar and and, yes. and fat on you yes. um and he had uh, many types of antibiotics um during uh, actually i think many types in a very short space of time which must have been wiping out um his gut bacteria and yes. um it you know after several inquiries he said oh yeah you can try an antibiotic you know but it's very expensive so it wasn't that kind of thing wasn't offered i mean this was mm -hmm. five years ago now yeah um I think and so I, I i stepped back and i just i just yeah. said um you know what this is my dad's journey and mm -hmm. i'm suffering because i feel like we can't do what what you know the things that i know mm -hmm. but this is actually stress, stressing my dad out more and so yeah. this is not you know i'm not going to yeah. put myself on his on his journey on his life and you his can't decision. take on too much you just have to do things step by step little by little the best way you can working with what you've got i had my family support which was amazing and really really great and they would bring me food baskets and things like that mm -hmm. um and you know i i credit my uh my wellness and my recovery from three things really one is my faith that all would be well mm -hmm. and two from leaning into my community and asking for what i needed and three my family really showing up like i've never seen it before you know yeah. inviting me into the home to live and so on so accepting all of that and, and having mm -hmm. good daily routines it's all about mm -hmm. routines and what we're going to speak about today is identifying different areas of your life and doing mm -hmm. a bit of an audit Mm -hmm. And I'm really interested in life design. When we design things, I mean, if we have a job, we go in and we, we have a plan, we have a strategy for where this company or someone who's an entrepreneur, where it's going to go. We talk about yeah. plans. Yes. And then I coach people and I go, okay, what's your plan? And people don't have one. Yeah. Oh, like, when you wow. first spoke to me, Susie, and you said to me, where do you want to be in three years time? Or what do you want this to look like? And I was like, uh, don't know. Uh. People don't <laughs> and, know. And, I don't you know questions that you would ask if you didn't get asked if you didn't ask at work about you know the mission what's the objectives and stuff you know you'd be kicked out on your ear you're going to have to yeah. know that to run yeah. a great business I, my argument is if you want a great life you've got to have a think about it you've got to first yeah. of all do what is audit. the great life that you want you know is what it is your it, friend's life is, yeah yeah because unless you think about that you can't get it but once yeah. you do think about it and speak about it and feel about it and open it. the door synchronicity kicks in mm -hmm. synchro destiny as Deepak Chopra mm -hmm. says kicks mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. you know it's all about I've written a book about manifestation my first book was about you know manifesting and using your brain to create your experiences and the more you know our thoughts are like magnets you know and, and they they operate on a whatever we think about we we bring in I mean, this is classic law of attraction stuff, which I believe in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter if you believe in or not, but it actually works. And to meditate, clear the mind, to be able to think positively about your life, to speak positively about your life is really, really important. Mm. If you are talking a down game, a negative game, a gossipy game, a bad news game, and there's a lot of bad news going on yes. right now out there, you are going to pull yourself down emotionally you're going to feel mm. shitty and rubbish mm -hmm. and that's not helpful for your immune system or creating a really fantastic life and we yeah. can create much better life this is a major change point that we mm. are all experiencing the whole world is on hold right now you can choose how you react a lot of people are in fear 
I recommend don't read the news, don't listen to the news, create a new ballpark of stuff that you're interested in right now to focus in on. Now you've got some time and we're all stuck at home and we can't get out, um, wherever you are. Use this time for good, for positive. So one of the things we're gonna to do today in this call is do a, 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 an audit of where you are now in your life. So okay. if you haven't, I need to get some paper ready, some pens, some pencils. I'm just gonna jump in for a second, Susie, because I've got a feeling Please. that the comments are gonna be on your face. So can we slightly um, tilt the camera so yes. that you're a little bit higher up in the screen because sure. I don't want people to not see you as sure. you're talking us through this. Sure. Where's your wingman? A little bit towards, yeah. Yes, look at that. Thanks, Will. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So yeah, Kanika, I hope that helps. You think a clear goal is important. Definitely, where your attention goes, clear energy goal. flows. So you, you know. Totally. You've got to be clear okay, on your Susie. goal. Right. You've got to be clear on your goal. Right. I've got my pens. First of all, I'm aware there's a lot of fear and anxiety. We're not uh, going on out there. We're not decrying that or ignoring that. We're acknowledging that. Mm -hmm. and this is a time for us to give a good look at our lives and make some good choices now so on um on your piece of paper i want you to draw a circle and i've actually put a diagram of this up on my insta feed so you can have a look at it there and divide the circle into eight segments so like um, this exactly like that jazz did you just do that that's very clever i did <laughs> <laughs> right great so you're making a wheel this is called the wheel of life in my book anyway literally in my book and um for each of these segments let's specify an area of life and i'm going to suggest the following although you choose your own but these are really great great categories they're on my instagram feed right now if you want to check Health and wellness, make that one of them. Write, write this down now so you've got a, a record of it. Health and wellness, relationships, that's your relationship to yourself, your relationship to the world, your relationship to your loved ones around. Your spiritual position in life, you know, are you connecting in? Can you hear your little voice inside? Are you in tune with your intuition? Do you have a spiritual practice? You might meditate, you might pray, whatever is your thing, it doesn't matter. You might go for walks in nature. Um, family, are you connected to your family? Have you got any things there that need ironing out? Uh, we found, when I got ill, all of my family issues dissolved, bam, overnight. All the little things that had been running for a few years dissolved. We all decided life is too short and we buried it all and got on with life. Family, how are you doing on family? Now you are ranking your life between one, which is it's not working, to 10, which is you're on top of it and you're in a good space with these categories. So for each category, I want you to decide where you are. Are you like a number five, which means it's okay, there's a bit of room for change, or are you a number 10, which is you've got it nailed, um, go through each category and write on your wheel what your score is for that category. So, no, Susie, recap, my, my face yeah. is covering, and I can't get it out, um, is yeah. covering one of the, so we've got uh, categories, we've got celebration, gonna, fun, yeah, spiritual. Okay, cool. I'm going to run through them. So we've got health and wellness. We've got relationships, spiritual, you mm -hmm. know, meditation or whatever you connect, nature, family, mm -hmm. your career, your contribution, you know, are you contributing to the world, to your life, to your family, to your loved ones? How are you on contribution? You know, in other words, are you giving? Are you giving enough? Fun! Are you having enough fun? If not, I suggest strongly that you get a bit more fun in your life. Because what's happening at currently is we're all a bit serious. And life is serious and you know, get, people get pretty stressed. And a lot of people that I'm dealing with, I go, are you having any fun or not fun? And they're no, no, not really. So we've <laughs> got to really create a life that is fun. We're meant to be here to enjoy ourselves. We're not meant to be slogging away a job we hate or having a miserable time. We're meant to be making a good job. And I think running 
having, you know, being successful at life means having a life that you love and that you enjoy. So are you having enough fun? Finance, you know, that's a hot topic always when I'm coaching people, it usually comes up. It's usually one, two, three areas that come up when I'm coaching people where people have got tricky issues and finance is often on that list. Um, have you got enough? Are you saving? Is it tricky? Do you need more money? How are you spending money? Are you mindful about money? Do you organize it? Do you pay your bills like automatically or do you have a load of suck of things that need your attention? All of that, how are you doing on finance? Celebration, are you celebrating life? One thing I learned when I nearly lost my own life, although I didn't really nearly lose it, when I was told I might lose it, I, when I wake up in the mornings, I celebrate having another day. And that's a kind of nice thing to do, have gratitude for your day. Um, and what else? So I'm gonna run through this list again. Do okay. your circle, it doesn't have to look beautiful for now. Also, this wheel is on my blog, on my website. So after this call, you can go and check it out if you need more information. It's all detailed in there, exactly how to do this. And we're Health putting down a number, Susie, for how, from a scale of one to 10, of how we're doing in that particular area. Exactly. One okay. is lousy, I'm not doing a very good job. 10, I'm doing a brilliant job. Five, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Room for improvement. <laughs> Fun. Um, so for those who want it, health and wellness, relationship, spiritual, family, your contribution, fun, finance, celebration, career. How are you doing one to 10? What's the one above health and wellness? The one above health and wellness is and wellness. Celebration and then um, uh, con contribution. Yeah. Oh, the one that's missing, sorry. What's missing? Family is missing, I think it's family. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Again, you can check my Instagram feed and there's all the slides up there with this slide on. So you can check it out. That's more than eight sections. Okay, I'm not very good at maths. <laughs> Make oh. as many sections as you like. <laughs> Is it? Nice sentence. Yes, you're right. Right, right. Whoever's pointing that out, good. What's the ninth choose... one? I don't know. But you can choose, you know, do your do your segments that work for your life. Okay. You know, this is not set in stone. This is a flexible, movable thing. These are suggestions. And could you give some examples of each? Yes, certainly. So health, for example, you might feel you're being really healthy and you're eating well and um, you're eating balanced food and you're going outside and getting fresh air, doing a bit of exercise, you might want to give yourself a five. If you're struggling um, and you're snacking on, you know, things you don't want to be snacking on and your diet's not great and you're feeling not very well, generally and sluggish, you might be lower on the scoreboard. Um, family, for example, you know, are you in touch with your family? Are there people you need to lean into with your family? Or are you pretty good at staying in touch? Are you caring for the older ones in your family or the younger ones or the vulnerable ones? You know, are you a good sister, brother, mother, husband, whatever? You know, are you doing good by your family? Um, contribution, an example of that is, you know, are you contributing to your community? Are you helping? I remember my dear mother who's passed now, uh, she would nip off on Mondays and Thursdays in her car and went, mom, where are you going? She said, and she's about 75, and she said, oh, I'm going to look after the old people. You know, I'm going to go and pick them up and take them to the village hall, and they play cards, and then I pick them up and bring them back. I went, Mum, you are the old people. And she was doing <laughs> things for like 20 years. And she didn't know when to stop, and she did it right to the end of her days because it made her really happy that she was contributing to our village and that making the old people feel better. So we need to be really <laughs> contributing um, to live a happy life. And I studied happiness. You know, I've written a book about it. I've written a book called Instructions for Happiness. And so I saw a lot of, I worked with a lot of celebrities. I had a celebrity agency. And I realized that people at the top of their game weren't always happy. People who had loads of money and a 
a private jet and a big house and, and, and really loads of success. These people were not, were, came off stage and were not happy. I went, wow, that's fascinating. You've got the money and the fame and all the things that we all chasing. All the adoration. And yeah. it's not the thing that makes you happy. And I get asked, what is happiness? Well, happiness is a feeling inside. And it's a choice, you know. You can yeah. decide to be happy. You can choose. It can be the simplest thing. You can look at a beautiful flower and go, oh, you know, bless my life. That can make you happy. I was listening to um, uh, a, a Sadhguru podcast the other day and, um, or, or um, recording on YouTube. And he was saying about Lao Tzu, who was um, a spiritual leader. And he, you know, he had all sorts coming at him and it was, it was extremely i don't know his story actually i've read some of his work but i don't know the story but sadhguru was saying you know he was going through what everyone else would find as emotional physical hell and um one of his students said to him one day how did you you know get through that period and he said well i had a choice i had a decision to make every single morning when i woke up i had to decide am i going to be joyful today or am i going to be miserable hmm. not is not is it's the, choice. the outside world going to be joyful today or is it, it going to be a miserable day for me it's am yeah. i going to step into that world as joyful or as miserable exactly. and um and, it, and it's you know in some we, ways like oh cliche oh life doesn't work like that but you know it we, have to, it's true. we have to come in yeah it's true how we frame everything i i worked with the inventor of nlp for years i ran their training company so i got very good i'm just getting some more tea Thank you. Can you, uh, um, can you explain what NLP NLP, yeah, NLP is? Yeah, neuro programming. And that is about ling using linguistics, words, and your mind, thoughts and feelings, and programming. How we program our mind and our words to have experiences in this world. And what it does is give you really useful techniques for changing things. So if you, for example, have negative mind chatter, you know, hands up who has that, all the hands in the room go, go up. Um, you know, you can identify that noisy, blah, blah, blah. you're no good, or you're not good enough, or you shouldn't have done that. You can identify the negative mind chatter and change it mm -hmm. because you become aware of it. And bad talk inside your head is one of the worst things mm -hmm. for creating a shitty life. Mm -hmm. And when you improve your self-talk, it's one of the greatest mm -hmm. things for having mm -hmm. a much nicer life. It doesn't matter. And for those, what, for those who, um, who find that, oh my God, I'm thinking negative thoughts, that therefore, you know, the bogeyman's going to uh, appear around the corner because I've summoned him. You know, it's, it's actually more that you should just be aware. The moment you become aware that you are thinking, that yeah. you, your mind is thinking, it's not that you are thinking, it's that your mind, your toolbox, your toolkit, mm -hmm is going that direction. So as soon as you separate yourself from your mind and your thoughts, you go, oh, you're not your thoughts. It's playing that record again. You're not that's, your that's the moment you're in, back in control. So you don't have to squash that. It's that will go eventually. Totally. And it, you know, we're programmed. It's this new own linguistic program. We're programmed as kids. Maybe your mum told you off all the time and you, you learned to believe that you weren't worthwhile. And um, I'm pleased too that you tuned in. Um, so, you know, it, it's like, it's like we can reprogram ourselves and we are just a bag of programs like a computer is. It's like we're a bag of software in the world with a, a few corrupt programs. And you know what the good news is, Jazz? We can change those programs. We know how to do it. Um, as soon as you're aware of the programming, aware of the thoughts, yeah, aware of this, exactly. you become the, the real you, not the, you know, like... This and isn't us, this is, this is my hand, this is my head, this is my brain, this is my mind, it's not me, it's yeah. my stuff. And so as soon as you become aware of the stuff, you can start using your stuff more mindfully. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, someone's we'll, asking- We'll do a Sunday slow yeah. on this. We'll do, we'll do a Sunday yes, slow we'll do. where we're downloading yes. some really great programs yeah. and kicking out yes. some really shitty ones yes. that are no good anymore. That, um, yeah, I think it is about practice. I, I think some people might have one day a spiritual awakening or an experience that means that they are totally aware and sometimes that could be life or death i mean yeah. susie's got a, a great story um uh yes yes susie and jasmine i love all the emojis um, so, susie, we'll come on the Sundays. so that i can speak to people with 
authenticity yes. and like I've yeah. done it you know I've done yeah. it how she heals myself from something that everyone said was impossible to heal from I did it so yeah. like using these tools they work it's not mm. bullshit you go oh you know you're always positive yeah yeah and the reason I'm always positive is because it blooming well works it yeah. works it even when you try and catch Susie out she's not going there like no, it's, it's going brilliant there. and um the yeah, one so Susie, we'll get you on the Sunday slow so we can get yeah. really into the juicy stuff. We'll get that, into that. Um, that I will do some downloads and some meditations. And I've learned really cool techniques for going in and downloading some really mm -hmm. seriously brilliant programs. Yeah, that... Susie's done uh, meditations with me where I literally with Skype to Skype. And, um, and she's, she is removing old programming, just talking it through me, and then, um, and then downloading new programming i mean it's when you think of it like a computer you suddenly think oh there's a there's a nice a kind of um yeah. metaphor for, for what's happening yeah. um but this is the barista i'm this. writing a book on creative visualization at the moment and uh, i love it you know creative visualization is the bee's knees you know let's all get into it because it really really works i sat in my hospital bed and visualized being on my beach my favorite beach in ibiza with my friends having a barbecue and i thought about this every day and I played the movie in my head like I was actually there. And it, I ended up being there. You know, I didn't die. I went to that beach. I had that barbecue. And I turned this mind movie into reality against all, you know, possibilities. And I just know my intuition is saying that's why you went through this, girl. So that you can actually help other people to believe you when you say creative visualization works. Because mm. you did it at the highest level. You know, you got rid of this thing that people said was impossible to get rid of. It wasn't like a little cut. It was yeah. a massive thing. Mean, yeah. I don't. So two things I want you to notice. When you do this circle, and you can do it at home, after the call, or tonight, or tomorrow, whatever, you, might f you find these two areas in your life. One, which you've got a high score, which has worked really well for you, and one where you've got a low score. Now, when you think about both those areas... I'm gonna pick randomly. It might be that finances are low and relationships are high for you. When you think about relationships and they work for you, you're gonna feel great. You're gonna feel in the flow, like, yeah, I've got that one nailed in my life. I feel, you know, feel good. And then when you think about finances, bam, you're gonna drop. The energy's gonna drop. You're gonna feel a bit, oh no. You suddenly gotta start thinking about bills you gotta pay and a bit of stress. and so it's going to alter the way you feel now the reason why i've got you to do that is to remember that you're generating your own feelings using your thoughts now if you can generate yourself to feel really bad or if you can generate with your thoughts to feel really good you start using that as a tactic start using what you think about to make you feel better and the better you feel, the more you're going to raise your frequency in terms of physics and your cell health. And the more you're going to have better things happening in your life. That is the whole point of being positive when you think about stuff. So it's very useful. It's a very mm -hmm. useful tactic to notice how it makes you feel. There are three questions I would like people to answer, the, write down the answers to. Number one. What is my number one goal right now that I would like to make happen? And then list three positive steps towards this. So, for example, I'll give you a couple of examples. You might want to start exercising. Well, okay, I need to download an app. I need to maybe get an exercise buddy who will go, have you exercised yet? Um, I'm talking to myself. This is my area that I'm not very good at. Um, I love writing books. I'll happily do that for a million hours a day, but ask me to exercise and I'll find lots of reasons why I shouldn't. My son is the opposite. He can exercise happily anytime. So what's my number one goal right now? And there's three positive steps you're going to take immediately to get to that goal. And you can make them little baby steps. It could be you want to take up knitting. Like Jasmine has. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what are you doing, Jasmine? I'm knitting. I said, really? She can't. 
Okay. She said, don't ask. So I did It's a brand ask. new hobby. I love it. <laughs> we will find out what the story is in due course. So that's your number one question. Your second question. These questions are all on my Insta thing and on my blog. And I'd love it if you write to me and give me your, your answers to these questions. Number two. What two simple things can I do to make my life better day by day? Examples. Change your diet. Ditch worrying about things you can't control. Stop something you feel addicted to. It could be your phone, could be cigarettes, could be alcohol, whatever. Stop toxic chat and bad gossip about people, for example. What two simple things can I do to make my life better day by day? Make them simple, make them practical, and make them doable. Write it down now. And commit to taking steps towards that. These are all written on the blog. They're all written in my Insta feed right now on a graphic. Number three, what new habit would make me happier straight away? Write that down. For example, thinking more positively, sleeping better and more, giving yourself time for more sleep, having a routine and a plan for each day, for example. Write this down. And then write down the following. We're going very fast, but we have to, because I want to go with the ground. <gasps> um, okay. My new routine from now on will include dot, dot, dot. Finish that sentence. It may be, for example, I'm going to talk to myself nicely, more in my head. I might take up meditation. I may, might take up knitting as in Jasmine's case, or I might reach out to family members more regularly. It could be anything. I mean, you decide. It's your life. You That's so my, my new routine, my new, what was that last one? Four? Finish my sentence. new routine from now on will include dot, okay. dot, dot, dot. So just to recap, um, we did yeah. the Wheel of Life. You can find that on Susie's um, website. And um, okay. Susie gave nine points because I think she took apart family and relationships and has put them together. So it's eight on that wheel. And you list yep. that from one to 10, how well you're doing on both of those. Then now we're on yep. these, um, this kind of mapping out. So we've got question one, one thing that you really want and three steps mm -hmm. to get there. Number two was two steps to um, doing two it. Two things you could do things. You could make that would make your life better day by day. Two things two that would make your life better. Make your life better. So it could be stop worrying or day, stop day. being on the phone all day. And then the third one is what new habit you could take on would make you happier every day. And by the way, on the wheel thing, I wanted you to mind map about your worst thing and your best thing to kind of get valuable information about what areas are not so good for you and what areas are good for you. Why am I asking you to do that? Because the lowest score will make you feel not so good and pull you down, but it'll be useful to find out what you need to up your game on. And the other one, which is something you feel really good, will make you feel really good. And that's what we want. So that gives you two different kinds of emotions and showing you the ability of how you can whiz from one emotion to another, up emotion and down emotion, and it's your choice according to how you think and how you feel about it. So my recommendation is think and feel about good things that make you happy as much as you can. People say to me, oh, that's not facing reality. You're creating reality with the way you're thinking and feeling every moment. And I'd like you to come back to your wheel frequently, have a look at it every week. Um, choose a day, maybe Sunday or Monday or the start of the week or the end of the week, where you review it each week and that becomes a new habit for you. And that way you're constantly reviewing your life, making some good choices, visioning, thinking about how to make it better. That's all good stuff. Um, I want to answer a few questions. Okay. My Insta keeps coming out, so I'll watch again later. Great, great, great. Um, so you have a choice on your feelings. 
Is yeah, you questions. do. Yeah, you do. You do. You do. You totally have a choice. We're not ever taught this. What a wonderful thing to teach kids in schools. I mm. taught my son early on that he's responsible for his feelings and, and you can choose. It's subjective how you react to things. The world is not mean to you. It's how we respond to things. If horrible things happen, we can look at them and go, I've got to learn from this. What is my teaching here? I mean, that's quite zen and quite philosophical, but it's a brilliant tool. Yeah. If anything shitty happens in my life, I look at it and go, oh, I've got something really big to learn here. Kind of thanks. You know, let's have a what look. If the pain, what if the pain of that situation is so overwhelming and yeah. so big and you cannot even imagine feeling anything other than angry and mm -hmm. hard done by and yeah. um, hurt? Yeah. You know, do you, do you well, be, you know, my one word, you, you get angry at yourself for feeling that and, and not being yeah. able to get out of that, you know? You know, you know when right. you look at people and you think, oh, just buck up or just smile, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and you're just in so much hurt that that, even, that makes you even more angry. What can yeah. you do? Well, people feel like they have to respond in a certain way. What I'm saying is you can actually change your response to what you would naturally happen. Say it's an, someone's made you angry and you wanna go Arr! and shout at them. Yeah. You can actually choose not to do that. And it'd be good for your physiology not to do that. Because mm -hmm. it will get you revved up. It will damage your immune system. At this time, we need to keep our immune systems really well geared. Mm -hmm. And anger is low. Fre I keep talking about frequency because I see the body and the world in terms of frequency. I write about it in my book, Instructions for Happiness. We are all vibrating magnets. You know, I'm vibrating to you, positivity. You can mm -hmm. feel that and it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was angry with you, I'd be barking at you. Arr. You'd feel that and you go, oh, I don't feel so good. This is all frequencies. We're like radio mm -hmm. transmitters, putting out frequencies to each other. Put out a good frequency and you will find that things shift. Mm -hmm. That person who's made you angry, actually, you've made yourself angry. Let's take responsibility mm. here. Mm -hmm. We are responsible for how we respond to the world. If someone's mm. giving us a hard time, you can walk away. Hopefully, you might not be able to if it's in your own home or you have mm. a very difficult situation, but make good decisions. If you're in mm. trouble in your own home situation, my recommendation is don't stay in a horrible situation. Now, getting out might be harder. You might feel it's harder to get out of a difficult situation than stay in. I question that. I think on a spiritual level that we have to live our lives in a way that we honor our truth and our happiness at all times. And if we're in a relationship that stinks or a scary situation or at work, you're being bullied, get out. Take take it on the chin, take the difficult times and leave. You have to look at your life on a macro. Don't put up with any SH1T. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do we stay positive but not stupidly so? Yeah, I know. <laughs> You've um, been like grinning like a fish or cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just have to be authentic and, and aware of how you're presenting yourself in the world and how you're responding mm -hmm. to the world and do it with ease and grace. And when ja Jazz introduced me, she said that I had grace during my illness. Now, part of me, my authentic self, was probably scared and a bit worried about what was gonna happen. Although I was not worried about dying because I have faith in something bigger and a bigger force. So I was never actually worried about dying itself even though I was warned that's what would happen but I was gracefully meeting these kind of ideas that were thrown at me and there was no point in me getting angry with the doctors angry with myself upset fearful because that wasn't going to help me and I'm very practical I like to do things that are going to get me out of a situation in an improved situation and what we have to deal with, the fundamentals as human beings that we have to deal with is our feelings, our emotions, and our intentions. And once we line those up to where we really want to be, then life flows, I promise you, life flows. 
since I got out of hospital and I've got this crazy story to tell people about, my life has flowed really, really amazingly. And it's because I'm aligning this and this and this. And you can do that too. Mm. You really can. Thank you, Susie. And, um, you know, I've done these quite a few times with Susie and it's, it's been interesting for me because um, <clears throat> some bits... I'm still stuck on, so I'm aware of that, and I'm going to move them. Other ones um, have changed within my wheel of life. I've obviously got better at some things, um, and, and now I'm looking at the kind of the weaker spots. Um, if you're somebody who is stuck in putting down the numbers um, from one to ten on where you where you sit on the chart, mm -hmm. um, or if you're struggling to write down two things to make your life better, or what new habit you can add, so if you're, you know, I would I would suggest to go for it intuitively. You know, if you're someone that, that thinks are hard and thinks hard about what should be your priority, just try it intuitively. Give yourself four seconds or four minutes to, to mm. no, four minutes is too long, four seconds is too short, but somewhere in between to give yourself um, um, a, a, a finite window in which to make a decision. And if you're someone that um, is maybe just giving a surface decision, then maybe try being the opposite of what you normally do and really pondering on it and thinking, yeah. you know, um, not just taking the, the first response. No, try exactly. it those two different ways. But learning, I'm writing a book at the moment, Jazz, called about intuition and about mm -hmm. creative visualization, two different books. And um, when we tune into our intuition, we get the best guidance. It's far better than using this because intuition mm -hmm. is going much deeper and it's got the mm -hmm. unconscious knowledge and wisdom to deal with. So we can make much better decisions when we're tuning into intuition rather than logic. Sometimes mm -hmm. logic can take us in the wrong direction. So when you're doing these things, if you need to sit on it, meditate on it, muse on it, go for a walk on it, do that. And the right mm. ideas will percolate out. I think we should do a session on, someone's just asked about how to visualize. I think we should do a session on creative visualization, yes. how to do, do it. That. People don't know yeah. how to do it. I, you know, I'd love to share. You know, I've spent 10 years learning how to do it really well. And you know, let's share the information because it's a life changer. It's a life changer and it's a wellness changer because when you start visualizing yourself and your body as being well, mm -hmm. guess what happens? You get well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then someone asked one more question. We've got a few minutes left. Can I ask an example of spirituality and contribution? So the contribution yes. was, are you giving back to your community, to your family, to the world? Are you contributing world? to the world, you know, in your then, work maybe? Are, you know, are you going to be remembered for doing something really great? You know, are you helping mm -hmm. out? There's a lot of people need help, kids, street people, gazillion people need help. Are you helping or are you, mm. you know, not? Are you ignoring that? So that's mm. contributing and it makes you feel good, by the way. And what was the other one, Jazz? Spirituality. Spirituality. It's quite a hard one to get your head around if you don't. Well, uh, have I actually think it's quite easy. It's, do, you, mm. do you go inside yourself? Do you sit and go inside? For example, do you meditate? Do you go for a walk and see the flowers and see the beauty of life and expand yourself? as a spiritual mm. being. You know, we're not a being who's meant to just jump on the tube every morning, go to work, bing, bing, come home and cook food. No, we're not we're robots. Be spiritual beings, you know, we're conscious, aware beings who are meant to be doing, you know, being, being spiritual beings in the world means tuning in to your heart, tuning into your spirit, tuning into your wellness. Celebration, celebrate your life. I'm lucky to be here today, let's celebrate. Don't just ignore it, you know, celebrate life, celebrate birthdays, celebrate successes, you know, celebrate making a nice meal. Yay. I mean, at first, you know, when I first ever did this with you, um, celebration and fun, I was like, aren't they the same? And then I thought, <laughs> oh gosh, in my whole wheel of life, I can't even give two segments to celebration and fun. Yeah. So fun in the day to day, fun in seeing uh, something funny or sweet um, in and around you and then celebrating your achievements, which don't have to be, um, you know, in the modern sense of what success is, or not modern actually, but, um, yeah. you know, uh, status, um, finance, but actually yeah. celebrating, you know, did you get over a hurdle? Did you, did you, yeah. was there something you were fearful of? Was there somebody that you found really difficult at work and then you've made a breakthrough? Yeah. Um, have you stopped saying that, have, have you stopped being triggered by something that your uh, partner does, you know? Mm. So little celebrations and obviously mm. the big celebrations like your mm. birthday. You know, yeah. a lot of people, you know, it's, it's, um, 
you, you do meet a lot of people who get very self-conscious and don't want to celebrate their birthdays. I mean, I was definitely somebody that didn't like weirdly because I, you know, I'm out here in a, in a, uh, a virtual world, um, putting myself up on a stage, but I didn't have a birthday party for years and years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And, Thanks. um, Thanks. and then I had one out of the blue with my friend Yasmin for, for our fort my 40th. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we, we've already got next year's in the diary yeah, because it was great. so much fun. It's great. So I, I'm going to celebrate that I celebrated myself in that way. Um, it's very important. And it's giving gratitude to yourself and your life and the people around you and celebrating with anyone on any success they have. Take mm -hmm. some time to be grateful for that and to mark it. Because what you're saying really is on an energetic level is, oh, I like that. I'll have more of that, please. Yeah. You know, and then that's working. Cool spinning more of that goodness back. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is like a game of tennis, you know, you, you ping it out and it'll come straight back. <laughs> <Bam>! <laughs> oh, Susie, thank you so much for this. Um, I've got my little worksheets um, and, you know, I think it's, it's like, you know, it is a practice. It's like the pr practicing awareness, the practice of meditation, the practice of um, routine and, and making sure that there's enough rest in your day. Um, there's yeah. enough family time in your day, there's enough spiritual time in your day, and then there's yeah. enough of this actually strategizing what you want out of this one sweet, wild life, whatever you want to call it. What are you going to do in this life? It doesn't mean you have to be rigid about it, it doesn't mean that you, you know, I can't do that, that doesn't fit in with my plans, you know. It's about having a sense of where you want to go, and then seeing the opportunities as they come in and deciding, oh, that's a nice little detour, or yeah. I quite like that, that quite fits in with where I want to go. I can, yeah. I, can see, I can see the opportunity in that opportunity of getting to, totally. uh, or, or of being where, where I want to be, so. Um, design your life, basically. Design your life, put some thought into the design, like you would anything else. You Any know, project that we bridge, take on, yeah. You design an outfit, you design work. Do it with your life, and mm -hmm. consider all the areas, and do it really well. We get one crack at this. Let's let's do it well. Thank you so much, Susie. So follow Susie on her, via her Instagram. Go to her blog. She's got a beautiful blog where all of this information um, is available. If you want to chat to Susie, you want to share what your um, your your questions were, or, yeah. or please, your, please then, chat to yeah. me. I'd love to, and I'll reply to you. And follow me on Insta, Susie Pearl X. Follow me on my blog, um, which is susiepearl.com, and I'm on Twitter. And I'd love to hear, I do podcasts. I'd love you to listen to some of my podcasts. Like Brilliant podcasts. David Lynch yes. and all sorts of gorgeous people, uh, Jasmine included. And um, yeah, stay in touch, you know, and, and Jazz and I will be doing some more stuff together for sure. Thank you, everybody. And thanks for joining Wellness Wednesday Workshop. Thanks, yeah. Susie. We'll have you back on for another workshop and we'll do a Sunday slow and we'll dive into what really went down. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye Sue. Thanks, Bye. Will. Thank you, Jasmine. Lots of love. Lots of love.